How do y'all barbecue rockstar here? How y'all doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Fireball, actually Jack fire. <coughs> Golly, that's good. The original Coors Banquet beer. Guys, today we got something really special. I mean, I'm talking about throw down, hoe down, something special, something different. Kind of a twist on what I've seen going around right now on the cooking channels out there, but uh, you know, I can't follow, I gotta lead. Because the old saying goes, if you can't lead, you gotta follow. If you can't follow, get the hell out of my way. Be back in just a minute. We're gonna kick this thing off right. Okay guys, uh, so as you saw in the intro, uh, the goofy intro I might add, today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. And I mean, folks, we're going to have some dadgum fun today. It's another day of 106, 107 degrees here in the Metroplex. And damn it, I don't want to go outside and fire up the big boy, but I'm going to have to for you guys today. We got something. I'm going to get crazy. I got a little, got a little warp mind today I want to work out. And over here on the cutting board, guys, I just, I don't even know what to tell you, but uh, man, oh man, I don't know. I don't know what all we're gonna do here, but let's just try to storyboard this out loud. <sighs> Folks, today we are going to do something I have not seen on a channel uh, recently, if, if ever. Uh, so I'm gonna do this a little bit different. Today, guys, we are uh, going to do a chorizo beef mixed hamburger, cheeseburger actually. But folks, it can't just be that simple, right? A mashup of chorizo, right? Johnsonville chorizo. This is not your greasy Mexican style chorizo, guys. This is basically like a pork sausage, but uh, with chorizo seasonings, all pork. Uh, minimally processed, no artificial flavors or colors, no nitrates, okay? And then of course we have the same thing over here uh, with our 80-20 ground round, as it's called. We're gonna make eight ounce patties, guys. And we're gonna go keto. Uh, we're, guys, we're dedicating this cook to the keto folk out there, the community. Tom, Mike, Sheena, and I'm sure there's many, many more that I'm not mentioning. Uh, Devil Dog, Jonesy, uh, Chef, all you guys out there. Today, guys, we're gonna kick it up to notches unheard of by mankind because we got the chopster. Last night we had the popster. Today we got the chopster. If y'all didn't check out my butter cheese popcorn Cajun uh, throwback video, butter cheese popcorn, check it out. Uh, but today guys, what we're gonna do is we're going to take organic yellow and orange bell pepper. We're going to take some garlic and we're gonna take some sweet 1015 onion. We're going to chop it up very, very finely. We're going to put that in a bowl with our one pound each of the ground round and the chorizo. We're going to mix them. Today guys, we're doing our, you know what, thundering longhorn. Hello, Lowry's. How you doing? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I heard you in the in the in the headlines here lately. Everybody's using you, folks. I've been using Lowry since Lowry's been using me, and that was way back in the day. We was cooking that prime rib. So today, guys, we're gonna mix this up, and uh, whoo, y'all stick around because this is gonna be lit. Speaking of lit, we need to go light up that damned old smoker out there. Be back. Okay, guys, just a little update here. We have gone ahead and used our microprocessor here. We have chopped up the jalapeno pepper, the garlic, the yellow bell pepper, uh, orange bell pepper, and onion, sweet 1015 onion. We're going to add to this about uh, 10 saltine crackers. We're gonna run that through this right here, making it into fine powder. We're gonna mix that in to help absorb the extra moisture and keep these bad boys together. Be back in a minute, okay guys. We are done uh, hand mixing with our hands, our beautiful chorizo ground beef mixture. Uh, we were very gentle, okay? Very gentle on how we mix this up. Uh, you still see some little pieces of cracker, for example. That's a saltine cracker. You still see chunks of onion. Uh, still see chunks of uh, jalapeno in there, bell pepper. Folks, this is a artisan burger. There's some jalapeno right there, folks. To this, what we did is we added some uh, what's that here sauce. Talking about Worcestershire sauce for all y'all that can't speak English. Jonesy. No, just kidding, Josie, I love you, bro. Uh, but we put a little bit of, uh, we threw an egg in there, cracked an egg, put an egg in there as a binder, bind everything together. We did put 10 saltine crackers uh, 
as evidenced there by the chopper. We did do, uh, what does everybody like generally on, on, on burgers, folks? They like a little ketchup and a little mustard, right? Y'all can have all that, doo-doo brown. We ain't doing it. We ain't gonna pop off like that, no. So what we did, guys, we squirted four or five little squirts of yellow mustard in there. And we don't do ketchup because ketchup is, eh, so passe. So what we did, folks, we hit it with a little bit of sweet and spicy barbecue sauce off in there, okay? And a little bit of tiger sauce because why? Because it's our show. We can do that. We also went ahead and hit it with some Lowry seasoning, guys, and we did hit it with some, uh, some uh, uh, brisket rub as well, the uh, thundering... What's that stuff called? Thundering Longhorn uh, uh, rub that I showed you. This is a very hearty burger. This is not for the faint of heart. This is not for guys who like to chop their thumbs off while uh, microplaning zucchini. People live out in Vegas, see what I'm saying? LOL, love you guys. And guys, when you're cooking, you might as well have a little something, a little carbonated beverage to cool everything down. We're gonna let this rest in the fridge, guys, for about 30 minutes. We're gonna cover it in uh, foil. Let this thing uh, come back and let it relax because we, although we were gentle with it, we beat it up pretty good, mixing all the ingredients. We're gonna let this rest for about 30 minutes in the fridge. We're gonna then bring it out. Uh, we're going to let it sit at, uh, on the curb, uh, the curb, <laughs> on, the, damn it, man, on the countertop. And we're going to get our, uh, uh, the firebox of our smoker lit up. We're gonna do a firebox burger here, guys. Everybody's out there doing it except me, so I figured if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Johnny Scoville, shout out, brother. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna let this rest. We're gonna come back. Uh, we're gonna light up our firebox and get that lit. We're going to then form our patties, let those rest, and then the rest of the show shall commence. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. Okay, guys, so uh, this is 1,700 pounds of steel. Right, so this is our smoker. This is where she lives. Damn, that thing's heavy. We don't leave ours outside because we don't want to get it wet. And this is what I have to go through every time, every time I want to uh, to move it out. So as you can see, we've got the uh, eight inch casters, which is an upgrade from Lone Star Grills. But without these, if they just had a little five inch, there's no way we could get them uh, roll this thing. It's 1,700 pounds, folks. Now. The reason why I don't have the big golf cart tires like uh, Will does at Fire and Steel Barbecue uh, is what I really wanted to have. But you'll see that the stacks here barely clear my uh, garage door. And when you see me pull it out, you'll see I have about a half inch of clearance. That was by design. A lot of measuring, a lot of working with, uh, with uh, Mr. Goodlove down there, Goodheart down there at uh, Lone Star Grill. So, Let's go ahead and pull this out here. I'm going to show you what I have to do every time. And pay close attention, guys. See how little bit of space I've got here. And I'm showing you that because that is just barely fit. Look at that, folks. Don, can you get a close up of that? Folks, I mean, what is that? That's three fingers, not even three fingers of plenty. Hurry up, we got to get it out here. Tony Roney, look out now, Tony Roney. Always face north and south, guys. Oh, I got a bad back. I shouldn't be doing that. And then we lock our casters in place thusly. And today, guys, we are going to be doing a, fi a firebox burger. Guys, this has turned into much longer of a video than I anticipated, but, uh, you know, I, I just got to share certain things with y'all. Okay, I never really talked about the firebox setup of my Lone Star Grill's 30 inch vertical smoker, okay? This guy right here is a fire management system. And folks, that is 3 8 inch steel right there, okay? This thing, that weighs about 25, 26 pounds just by itself. This guy here, this is your fire grate. That is one half inch steel, which matches the one half inch thick firebox, half inch steel. This guy here, quarter inch steel. Uh, I think they call this ash pan, I believe. This thing guy was, weighs about 50 pounds. 
This weighs about 70 pounds. This weighs about 25 pounds. So every time I clean this smoker out, guys, it's like going to the gym, I promise you. Now, normally, I would go ahead and I would pull this out like this. I'd put my chimney starter in there, put uh, a tumbleweed underneath it, my charcoal in there, I would light it. And because we have airflow coming from beneath, I would light everything up. It would start to ignite. Once it got ashed over, I would dump everything in there, shove this back in here like that and uh, dump the, uh, the coals in there and I'd put three splits across, one, two, and then one in the middle. Jerby, if you're watching this, that's how I do mine, bro. I don't know, you do you, I'll do me, bro. We burn it up in the end. Guys, this is a highly convective pit. This thing breathes like a damn dragon after he ate a jalapeno chili, I'm here to told you. This thing runs like Tony Roney on payday, let me tell you guys. So normally I would run it like that, now up here, guys, this is what's called a warming oven. This is about a $2,500 option. This here, you've got butterfly valves. So if you wanted to warm things, you could put, I've got several, you see those over there. You got several trays, one, two, three. I could put three trays up here and warm up whatever I want. Or if I wanted to grill, I could simply move, get rid of the V-shaped firebox, get rid of that, I could move this guy, I would actually put him down here and I would put a grate right about here. So my fire in essence, guys, would be here and my cooking grate would be here or here. Tonight, guys, that is what we're going to do for our firebox challenge. Now, most people with smokers don't have the added luxury of this, what they call a warming oven. I've used, I've cooked bread in this thing. I've cooked bacon in this thing. I've held briskets and ribs at this thing. Um, I've actually worn beans on top of that thing right there, guys. Melted butter, you know, kept my sauce warm. I've done it all. This plate here, guys. Oh, shit. That thing is about, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds. He goes over there. Now what we have, guys, is a portal down to the bottom. You can see where I'm going with this. Fire, fire management system going bye-bye. The, uh, the uh, fire grate. It's gonna be right here. We're gonna build our fire. Probably gonna put our cooking grate right here, guys, because we're gonna put some wood on there as well. We're gonna cook our burgers over wood today, which is another thing I don't see a lot of people doing. So you've already seen all the effort I put into my burgers. Now you're gonna see the effort I'm gonna put into the flavor I'm gonna get from this uh, highly modular, highly adaptive system. Folks, all that to say this, whenever you're thinking about buying your next uh, fire uh, pit or your smoker or your uh, cooking pit think about modularity think about multiple uses this thing you cannot configure this thing enough this this thing begs to be worked and today guys you're going to see something i've never had on anything on my channel today you're going to see the firebox burger be back in a minute Yeah, y'all, when you're starting your fire outside, uh, I do recommend, highly recommend, a uh, if you're going to use a gun or something, I see those little pistols. I don't recommend those because if you notice, your flame source is so close to your uh, butane or propane, whichever one you're burning. I've seen a lot of those accidentally. If it's windy, the fire goes back through the tube that feeds it and does combust. I've seen them blow up in people's hands wasn't a major deal but scares the hell out of him one guy's shirt caught on fire his wife put him out it was all right guys get you a long one get you a long one get you a tony roney setup what i call it and folks you're gonna deal with fire you need dirt and you need a shovel folks and i mean lots of dirt because that's the only way you're gonna put out a grease fire okay you don't ever put water on a grease fire and i'm being serious you don't put water, you don't put any kind of foam or none of that bullshit. Get you some good dirt or sand is even better that will smother, that will take the air out, that will extinguish your flame immediately. Folks, when you're dealing with a monster like this, okay, 
you've got all kinds of opportunities for fires, right? So even though I do run water at the bottom of mine when I do my brisket cooks, guys, there's so much grease in there. Man, if this thing were to catch fire, which thank God it doesn't because I clean the sides down after every cook, which this chamber has not been cleaned since I did the big 4th of July cook, but normally I would take my plastic scraper, scrape up down all the uh, creosote that is built up. I respray everything. Uh, that's after, of course, I brush down all the grameens. I never use water to wash my pit because that does give rust. But you see on all my deflector plates, all that grime and gunk and all that, that sure looks nasty, right? Folks, that's good loving right there. You just scrape that off into the trash can and re-season it. You don't wash that off. You, you get it clean as you can get it. You re-season with good oil, heat it back up, and it re-seasons itself. That's how you get long life out of a pit that costs as much as one of these costs. Like I said, over here, you got your fire pit, firebox going over here, guys. I start it, a little bit of uh, paper there in the bottom, and then I hit it Tony Roney style up here, so. We'll get our fire going, get the burgers on. I'll hit you back, all right? I hope you guys are getting a little entertainment out of this, but at the end of the day, guys, we're doing something pretty serious here. You know, we're dealing with a lot of fire, dealing with a lot of steel. I'm in close proximity of two of my vehicles. My house is right there. My neighbor's house is over there. I got a fence right here that's dry as shit because we haven't had rain in two months. Folks, I'm being serious about fire. Respect her, respect that fire. Um, I was talking earlier, ventilation is key, right? So. I've got a south breeze blowing right now, and my firebox here is, excuse my fingers, my firebox is facing, this is your south end, that's your north end up yonder, right? So I'm gonna let, let some air get in there, get up underneath my chimney, chimney starter, get that thing really good and going. We will then put our grate probably, probably about here, guys, but we're gonna put a, a split or two in there. We're gonna burn a good bit of coals, the ash, of course, will drop down to the ash pan, which is here, that giant 50, 60 pound behemoth I told you about earlier. But uh, anyway, guys, I just want to share this with, I don't know how often people get to see this for the average backyard cook. Now the pros, you're probably laughing at me going, yeah, that's cute. Well, I'm not catering to the pros. I'm catering to people like myself who are backyard enthusiasts here. Um, this is the biggest pit I've ever owned. And I've had to learn to respect it. Um, just pulling it out here will break your back. So anyway, guys, hope you're getting something out of this. We'll be back in a minute. Get them burgers on. Ciao. So you know I wasn't going to just do meat no size, didn't you? Now, I don't think this is exactly keto or low carb, but uh, folks, I love potatoes and I love vegetables. Well, let me just, <laughs> that was a stupid statement. Potatoes and vegetables. Hello. <laughs> I like uh, potatoes, which is my starch and my carbohydrate. And then I like my lesser carbohydrate and my sugar being the uh, vine or root. Well, that's stupid again, because potatoes are root vegetables. Okay, onions and peppers and garlic, okay, damn it. Olive oil, uh, did some of my uh, brisket rub on there to echo the flavor of the burgers, guys. I did a little Lowry seasoning, because that's what's on the burgers, a little salt, a little pepper. And I hit it with a little bit of melted butter. That's gonna go into a 450 degree oven. That will cook uh, whilst, Jonesy, that's for you, whilst the burgers are on the fire. We'll be back when we plate all this up, guys. Is there anything more beautiful than that? Folks, if you had smell-o-vision right now, we'd be buddies, I promise you. Folks, I'm doing this for you. I wish I was like Jesus. I wish I could feed all of you with these four freaking three-quarter pound burgers right now. 
I wish I could beat all of you, but I can't. So just understand that when I cook this, folks, I'm cooking it for you guys. I'm cooking it with love and respect, and I want you guys to do the same. But all that's for naught if we don't share it, right? You have to share it with the world. Food and love go hand in hand as you and I are brothers. Flip these, we'll come back. Okay guys, so this ends our video. It was a long day, it was a long cook. I think I did three videos today, four videos. I don't know what it was, but it doesn't matter. I did it for you guys, my new friends. Well, both old and new. Some of y'all people out in Vegas, y'all old and shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna hit that with a little bit of onion, okay? Now remember guys, there's already onion in the burger, okay? There's already bell pepper, there's already jalapeno in the burger and whatnot. So, and remember guys, we had the, uh, the uh, potatoes here, which are the class C little red new potatoes. We had onions, whole clove garlic, jalapenos, yellow bell peppers, uh, orange bell peppers and a couple of different rubs and a little olive oil. So guys, I hope that you enjoy this. This is from our house to yours. Uh, you got Miss Dawn on the camera, so y'all give her a shout out because you know, you gotta give Miss Dawn a shout out. But this is the one I'm gonna eat because my nasty fingers have been all over it. So guys, thanks so much for watching. We appreciate you. Barbecue Rockstar out.